Um, my name is Ali Gilani. Uh, I am the European label representative for Bandcamp. Um, I also run an independent record label called First Word Records, uh, based in London, where I live. Um, and we put out soul, hip hop, jazz, and that kind of music, and have been doing that for about 14 or 15 years. Um, it was actually through uh, running my record label that I started working for Bandcamp because I used the site to sell mu our music and I got to know the guys a little bit there and it was such a huge part of how we survived as an independent music business, which uh, as some of you know is quite hard, um, that I asked if I could work for them and uh, three years later here I am talking to you. So. Um, I'm going to kind of assume, how many of you sell music on Bandcamp? I can see a few here. And how many of you bought from the site before? A few more, okay, cool. Um, so uh, what I'll do, uh, the, the purpose of today is to kind of give you uh, seven or so tips on how to get the most out of being on the site and how to make money from it. Uh, and along the way, I'll go through a few of the basics of how uh, how the site works, and hopefully you'll learn a few things. Um, we should have some time for questions at the end, so um, store them up, and hopefully I can help you out. Um, so first up, with the basics. Bandcamp is a thriving global music community where fans discover new artists, intimately connect with them, and directly compensate them for their work. So the idea is that you, as an artist, can upload your music, sell it to your fans, uh, you can also sell merch, whether that's vinyl and CDs or T-shirts, posters, etc., etc., and they pay you as directly as possible. We at Bandcamp take 15% of digital sales and 10% of physical sales. Uh, there's PayPal fees, fees on top of that, um, and we pay out once a day. So it's not the traditional distribution model of 30, 60, 90 days waiting for your money. You get that uh, as soon as we can possibly get it to you from the fan. Fans uh, have paid artists and labels over $330 million uh, using Bandcamp over the nearly 10 years that we've been running. Um, and that's around $7 million every single month at the moment. Uh, we're selling around 36,000 records a day, which is about one every two and a half seconds. Uh, and we're signing up 100,000 new fans for fan accounts every month at present. Um, over 600,000 artists have sold something on Bandcamp, and the social side of what we do now accounts for um, almost one in three sales. I'll come on to that a little bit later on. Um, Bandcamp's developed now from being a place, just a, a place for you to sell your music, and people will find it if they can find you, to now being somewhere where we are actually curating uh, the content that we have on the site and directing fans to music that we think they'll love. But more on that later on. This is a nice quote. Um, we had a feature in NPR Music a year or two ago, and I just like this quote. Um, it's probably quite a mouthful for a non-native English speaker, because it's a mouthful enough for me, and um, English is supposedly my first language. Bandcamp serves as an honest-to-goodness, proof-in-the-pudding bulwark against the creep of artistic monoculture fueled by the consolidation of digital life into the hands of a few companies. Maybe the future isn't a dumpster fire after all, um, which I think means he likes us. But, you know, it's a nice way of putting it. More eloquent man than me. Anyway, moving on into some tips for you to make the most out of being on Bandcamp. The first one is editorial. So uh, about two and a half years ago, we launched what we call the Bandcamp Daily, um, which you can see here. This is the front page of the site. This is from probably about the middle of last year, actually, um, that this still is taken. Uh, so we have an editorial team of four people based in Brooklyn in New York. And we have a team of about 70 to 80 freelance writers uh, based across the world. And their job is to highlight the best music on Bandcamp and deliver it to our our reader base. Um, so this is the front page of the site, bandcamp.com, and each of these images relates to a different article on the daily. Um, we currently get around a thousand pitches a week for inclusion in the daily, which is a lot. Um, so for the editors, it's about trying to find ways to cover things fully and in depth, but also try and cover as much as we possibly can as well. Um, what we 
never ever have happened with with the Bandcamp Daily is uh, what you will see on a lot of other blogs. Here is the new single from X. Copy and paste the press release, and we call that an article. That's not how we want to do things. We want to, wherever possible, interview the artist, um, go a little bit in depth, find out more about other artists like them, and present something that's interesting for people to read. Um, if you want your music uh, featured in the Bandcamp daily, uh, you need to upload it to the site, make your page look good, more of which later on, make sure there's lots of information about the release, and send us the link, ideally eight or nine weeks ahead of when your release is coming out. The reason we need such a long turnaround time is because we want to write something fuller and with a bit of substance to it, we need that amount of time to be able to commission a writer, edit, make sure that the article is as good as it possibly can be, and then get it up. Um, one of the other things we have to, as part of our editorial is the Bandcamp Weekly, which is our weekly radio show. Uh, this is um, put together by my colleague Andrew, who's based in California, and I sometimes guest host it. And we commission uh, an illustration of the featured artist of the week. This is Henry Wu from his album uh, sometime in the middle of last year that he put out. And uh, we put a load of tracks in. The good thing about our radio show is that um, unlike others where you'll hear a, a track and think, oh, that's great, I should buy that, and maybe you never remember to do that. With ours, you just click visit album page, buy now, and you can buy that release straight away. So we're trying to take that gap from someone hearing something that they love to them spending some money on. We're trying to make that gap as short as possible. Um, incidentally, for all of this stuff, the place to send things to, if you have music you want to share with us, you can send it directly to our editorial team, which is just editorial at bandcamp.com. You can also send it to me, uh, which is ali, A-L-Y, at bandcamp.com, and I can forward it on. I can't guarantee that your stuff will get written about, but I can guarantee it'll get listened to and get seen by our editorial team. Another thing we do is the new and notable section. So this is stuff where maybe we can't write a full article. Maybe it's just a single or an EP, or we've heard about it very late notice, but we'd really like to feature it. So we do these little one-line reviews. We put three or four of these up every day. And again, that goes on our front page and is also replicated in our app. So it's, it's a nice way of kind of getting a little bit of, um, of shine on something that maybe, maybe doesn't warrant or for whatever reason we can't do a full article for. Um, just another instance of the, the type of franchises we have in the daily. Um, we have regular columns for electronic, soul music, jazz, reissues, metal, and zillions of other genres that I didn't know exist before I worked at Bandcamp. And we also do things like this. Uh, we have a feature called Big Ups, where we get an artist to pick their favorite music on Bandcamp. Um, so it's a nice way of artists telling their fans other artists that they love. And at the end of uh, 2017, we did biggest ups. So we got 40 different artists to share their favorite releases from the year. So we're always trying to find something new, some ways of kind of um, uh, just giving a bit more quality to, to what we're doing, I guess. Unlike most um, uh, online music journalism, we're not driven by ad sales. We're just driven by wanting Pete to show uh, interesting and perhaps unheralded music to our fan base. Um, and a, a note on that, on what gets written about. Um, so this is a really interesting story that um, my colleague Joe Keyes, who is our editorial director, told me earlier this year. So as I said, they get a 1,000 pitches a week. They get stuff from PRs, from labels, from myself. Um, obviously, our editors know more about music than any four people I've ever met in my life. So they know a lot of stuff themselves and have relationships with artists. Um, but they also know that sometimes there's things that they maybe miss. And so they keep an eye on our bestseller list uh, on the front page, on our discovery platform. They click on bestsellers and just see if there's anything that maybe has slipped through their net. And this release, which the cover for there, I think it's an artist called Odd Tower, I think, but I might be wrong. Uh, it kept popping up in the bestsellers. So they were like, OK, well, let's check this guy out. So they started listening. And it was kind of this uh, ambient, baroque, trip hop synth kind of thing, kind of do me, do metal in places. Pretty interesting, sounded kind of cool. They clicked on the guy's website. He made maps for every track. So there was this whole mythology behind the music. And they thought, well, this is very interesting. And then they went back to his Bandcamp page. And every release on Bandcamp, you can tag genres that you want your music to be uh, placed in on the site. So they had ambient, and they had trip hop, and they went fine. And then they had dungeon synth. And 
the four of them looked at each other like, what the hell is Dungeon Synth? We've never heard of this. So they clicked on the Dungeon Synth tag and found 10 pages of releases on Bandcamp that were tagged as Dungeon Synth. So it was a whole genre on our site we'd never heard of. And hence, we commissioned a guide through the darkened passages of Dungeon Synth. And the reason I bring this up is that that is the most read article on the Bandcamp Daily ever. And that is remarkable <laughs> for a number of reasons. Um, but the one that's sort of the key takeaway for me is it shows that the fan base we have on Bandcamp, um, they're inquisitive. If you ask them what their favorite genre is, it's the one that they're about to discover. They come to us because we give them something slightly different to what they read in the mainstream. We can cover albums that are getting a lot of coverage in Pitchfork or um, you know, on The Guardian or wherever else, and they'll do OK. We'll get readership. Those releases will sell well. But when it comes to actually what, what people are interested in reading about, it's stuff like this that maybe they've never heard of, and they might find their next favorite record. So um, never think that your music is too weird for Bandcamp. There is always a place for it. Next thing, recommendations and fan accounts. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning that we're signing up at the moment 100,000 fans a month to have fan accounts. Um, this is what a fan account looks like. This is mine. There's a picture of me playing some music on a beach in Montenegro many years ago. It was slightly warmer than it is today. And uh, yeah, so this the way a fan account works is um, everything that you buy on Bandcamp, let's say you buy the vinyl of a release, um, you get the download instantly, which you can download in whatever format you want. And then if you download our app, you can then stream the music you've bought uh, un unlimited, without charge. Um, the reason we do that is we kind of feel it's a grown-up approach to music. It's like you've bought the vinyl, you could go and rip that and get the download, but look, we'll just give you the download instead. You could then download that to your computer, sync it with your phone, make sure it gets done before you have to leave the house to go to work and then listen to it on your, on your way to work, or we could just let you stream it because you've already bought it. Um, so that's how that works for the app. It also puts all of your stuff together in one place on, on the web. And this is a publicly viewable page. Um, you can hide releases if you're embarrassed by your last purchase and don't want the world to know that you're a um, secret Celine Dion fan. Not that she's on Bandcamp, I don't think, but anyway. Um, and you can also uh, get followed and follow other fans on Bandcamp. So these are my followers on Bandcamp. Um, and uh, they're all people who've seen my music taste and think it's worthy of notes. Um, and what happens then is once a week, you get a roundup email uh, rounding up what other fans have bought, uh, other fans that you follow. And uh, I can scroll through that. And if something looks interesting, I can click on it. And then if I buy it, I get an email saying, congratulations. Or, well, sorry, the person who recommended it, in this case me, gets an email saying, congratulations, this person just bought this after dis discovering it from your recommendation. So it's a really. Um, a kind of very uh, loose social network, but not just a social network of people who like music, but of people who pay for music, who are willing to put their hand in their pocket and spend money. Um, one of the interesting things as well about Bandcamp in terms of that and the kind of audience we have, uh, we have an option on the site uh, to what we call minimum pricing. So you set a price, you decide how much you want to sell your music for. And you can check a little box that says, allow the fan to pay more if they want. 40% um, of the sales on the site, the fans pay more than the minimum, which means that in an era when they can listen to music unlimited for free, there are fans out there who decide not only do they want to pay, but they're going to pay more than they even have to, which speaks to the kind of fan that we have on the site. Um, so yeah, these, this kind of way of interacting with people is, is really nice. I mean, and, and it's, we're actually finding a lot of artists are using it now. They're setting up um, fan accounts on Bandcamp, letting their fans know that they can follow on on there. And it, it's the equivalent of kind of being in the record store and looking over someone's shoulder and seeing what they're holding when they go up to the till. Um, and not every artist wants to take a photo of their breakfast and post it on Instagram. But a lot of them do love music. And sharing stuff in this way is a kind of nice way for them to interact um, with their fans. Another thing we have is artist recommendations. So um, at the bottom of every page, uh, album page on Bandcamp, we have what we call the recommendations footer. So we have this section over on this uh, right-hand side, as you're looking at it, 
Uh, if you like Sarah Williams White, you may also like. So we fill up those spaces with um, releases that other people who bought this also bought. So you know, like on Amazon, you know, if you'd like this, you know, other people who bought this also bought this, that kind of thing. And then we also pick stuff that our editorial team have covered that is of a similar genre. So that kind of goes on the far side. These first two spots, however, are, in fact, it's actually three if you take up all the options, are for each artist can recommend another artist on Bandcamp, or another release on Bandcamp, sorry. So it says here, Sarah Williams White recommends, and she's put another release of hers, and then a, a release that her brother did, which she appears on as well. Um, so this is free advertising space, and um, we're encouraging artists, you know, if you're going on tour with someone, do a little swap. Say, well, I'll, I'll promote your release, you can promote mine. And it's a nice way of kind of, um, again, giving fans a little insight into what you're into. Uh, so that's another nice little feature that we added quite recently, actually. Design. So I mentioned making your page look nice earlier on. Um, and there were lots of ways to do that. Um, each page is completely customizable, so you can go in and either just change the colors of the header and the text and all of that, or you can get very creative, as people have done here. And there's you know, some really um, interesting things that people have done to kind of make the site feel their own. One of the reasons that people like using Bandcamp is they feel they are buying directly from the artist. So the more that you can personalize that and make the fan feel that connection with you, the better. Um, and people have done some pretty creative stuff, as you can see. Um, you can also add video. Um, so if you have a pro account, um, you can upload a video for e whichever track you want, and you can have that feature at the top of the page. Um, so this is one from uh, an artist of mine on my label. Um, and the cool thing about the video as well is you can actually embed, if you all of our releases on Bandcamp, you can embed into any other website. If you embed the video, it will actually have the video, but it will have a buy button right underneath it. So not click on YouTube, go to the page, click that see more and then you see the little link to go and buy it. It's giving fans the option to just single click and they're in the page and they can then buy it if they like the vid video and like the release. Next thing to show you, stats. Everyone in the music industry likes to talk about stats, um, which is exciting, although sometimes I find I don't have enough time to actually do anything with those stats. But anyway, there's a few things you can see here which give you a kind of uh, a little insight into how you're doing and I find quite interesting. Um, so you can see a play count. So you can see complete, partial, and skipped plays for any release. It will show you how you're doing. And you can, as you can see at the top, you can expand the selection, seven days, 30 days, 60, all time. You also, I don't know if you can see, it says uh, seven days today in Defender. If you press Defender, you can play a little video game as well with your nice little um, graph that your sales have built. Um, I have no idea why that's there, but it is. So enjoy it. Um, you also get, um, actually going back one, you, the one I've not got a slide for it, but Buzz is quite an interesting one. So if you click on Buzz, it shows you um, where your sales are coming from. So it basically shows you how people are visiting your page. So it's quite useful if you do some PR activity, you know, you've had a feature on an online magazine, you can actually see, well, is anyone actually clicking through and coming to the page? from that. Um, we also give you top plays from your embedded players. So again, you can see, oh, well, I had that feature in this thing, and it took ages to organize that, but actually only five people pressed play. And is it worth it? And, you know, giving you just a kind of real kind of snapshot insight into how uh, the work that you're doing to promote your music is actually being received. You can see your sales and downloads. This isn't hard financial data. It's more just a trend-based thing to show you how you're doing at any one time. Um, and can be, uh, I when I have a new release go up, go up, I'm refreshing that page every five minutes to see what's going on with it. It can be quite exciting if you're a little boring like me. Um, and we also have a map, so it shows you where people are buying your music, um, and it actually gives you a list of top cities as well, um, which I know people are using more and more for touring. They can actually see there's a few places here for some reason we're getting quite a lot of uh, joy with. And I guess if you you know combine this data with what you're getting from Spotify and other places, you can get a really good picture of your fan base and kind of what's going on, which is useful. Um, one thing that we offer, which not a lot of other people do offer, is uh, mailing list. So every sale you make on Bandcamp, you get an email address. That's not our data, that's your data. 
it is fully GDPR compliance, uh, and you can download um, those uh, emails whenever you want and import them into MailChimp or whichever other mailing list provider you're using. You can also download your sales report anytime you want. We pay out every single day, as I mentioned before, uh, and you can download your sales history anytime you like and see how things are doing. We're actually revamping the sales report. It's one of the oldest bits of the site. It's been there nearly 10 years. Um, and it works, but it's a little clunky. So by the end of this month, that's going to get revamped and it'll look nice and shiny and give you a, a little bit more insight into how things are going. <coughs> Add merch. Now, for merch, I mean uh, either um, musical merch, so vinyl, CDs, cassettes. Cassettes do very, very well on Bandcamp. They're, it's like the fastest growing, um, uh, or one of the fastest growing merch types on the site. Um, merch now accounts uh, for just over half the revenue on the site. So even though you need the digital first, and you know it's primarily a place to sell digital music, um, sales of merch are a huge, huge part of why people use Bandcamp. And um, it's worth putting it up and taking some nice pictures. Um, I mean, these are kind of like very pro-looking, fancy photos, which you can do if you want, um, uh, and that's great. We actually have mock-ups, um, so if you don't have your stock yet, you can just drop your um, the cover in, and it'll create what it would look like for, for whichever format you're doing. But I think sometimes just photos like this, which, you know, that's just the guy stood in front of a wall. It's nothing, there's no fancy studio or anything like that. Um, I think. Sometimes stuff that's a bit more personal can actually be more effective than a super slick, you know, white studio shot. Um, and a picture of the artist wearing their own T-shirt or holding up the record or anything like that is actually, I think, kind of feeds into more of what people come to Bandcamp for um, than, than maybe something that's a bit slicker. But anyway, that's up to you. You can kind of play around with that. Promote, really obvious thing. Um, we find, uh, I deal with a lot of record labels um, around Europe and um, quite often we get them signed up and then they say, oh, you know, we, we put the thing up and we sold some, but not so many and I don't know. And I go and look at their email out that they've done to promote the release and there's a link to Spotify and there's a link to Apple Music and there's a link to, you know, a local shop that stocks it, but no link to Bandcamp. Um, we do a lot to encourage sales ourselves, you know, from the editorial and the, the uh, social stuff with the fan accounts, et cetera, et cetera. But still the number one way of getting people to come to your site is by you telling them. Particularly with a site as personal as Bandcamp, where it is your page, it doesn't belong to your distributor or anything like that, it, it's yours. Um, you sending fans directly to it is going to be very, um, uh, persuasive. Um, so, you know, we do work with all these kind of major, uh, you know, link fire and companies like that, that, that give links, um, you know, it's worth putting us in there. Um, incidentally as well, um, one of the things that, uh, and this is kind of a personal thing, not necessarily a, a cross band camp thing, but anyway, um, I often get people saying to us, uh, we have this new release coming up. We're going to give it if we give it to you for a week exclusively, could you give us some editorial coverage? And we, we, we've never done that and we never will. Um, if people want to make it exclusive to us, great. It won't make us any more or less likely to um, cover their music. If it's good and we think our audience will be interested in it, we will cover it. But that's an editorial decision, not a, a business decision. Um, and we would always encourage people, put your music everywhere. There's no point being just in one place, you've got to be wherever your fans are going to be. Um, but we think that Bandcamp is a place where a lot of fans are now. So, you know, by all means, uh, have it up in all these other places, but have it in Bandcamp too, because for some fans, that's their go-to place to buy new music. Um, we also have a page, bandcamp.com forward slash buttons, and there are about 40 versions of our logo in whatever color and format you like. So you can download them and use them to put them on your newsletter, put it on your website, make sure that people know you have a Bandcamp page, and uh, uh, link through to that and uh, get people buying. The last thing I wanted to show you um, is our artist app, which we launched about a year ago. Um, so it's available on iOS and on Android. Um, and uh, I've got a short video to show you, which will explain better than me how that works. So that's this. Hi. 
Hi, this is Ethan from Bandcamp, here to show you our new app for artists and labels. The app lets you directly message your fans, uh, even targeting those messages by fan location and level of support. It also gives you a real-time mobile view into your stats and also helps you manage and fulfill your merch. So let's take a look. All right, this is the Home tab where you have an overview of your plays and sales. It also lets you initiate a message to your followers down here and alerts you to anything in your account that needs attention. If you tap on the overview of your plays, that's a shortcut over to the stats tab where you can filter by time, like the past month, week, and so on. And down here, you can see how many plays and unique listeners each of your records have had in that time. If you tap on an album, you can see its plays broken down by track, including the number of complete plays, partial plays, and skips. You can also view your sales stats from here, so I'll go to that tab. And for each of the items you have for sale, you can see total sales and number of purchases. And then you can tap the item to see the sources of those sales. So for example, many of this album sales came from Google searches and also from Bandcamp's own discovery tools. You can also communicate with your fans from inside the app. And to do that, you tap on the messages tab, tap new message, go ahead and compose your message and add a photo. Right here, we show you how many people your message will go to, which is the number of fans you have in any location who have spent any amount. If you're a Bandcamp Pro subscriber or have a label account, you can also target those fans by location and their level of support. So to do that, you just tap here, and then in the filter settings, tap on location. So if you're on tour and heading, say, to Seattle, you can enter that here, and now you can see that the message is just targeting fans within 20 miles of Seattle. And you can adjust that range if you like. And if you wanted to do something like a VIP meet and greet, down here you can also filter by amount spent. And as you change these settings, you can see that the recipient count updates right up here. Let's switch this back to any level of support and go ahead and send the message. And when you do that, it's not like social media where you're competing with thousands of other posts and need to pay to boost your post just to get your followers to see it. When you send this message, it's not only delivered inside the Bandcamp fan app, but it's also delivered to your followers via email, just like a standard newsletter. Now, fans can of course opt out of that and just get your messages in the app if they prefer, but the default here is that if you send a message, we're going to do our best to make sure that your fans actually get it. After you send the message, you can see it appears right here, and your fans can comment on the message. And if you like, you can reply back. You also have a fans tab, which shows you all your fans and lets you search and filter by date and amount spent. And when you tap on a fan, you can see their purchase history and even send them a direct message. Next is the merch orders tab, which lets you view your unshipped orders view any special instructions left by the customer, update a customer's address if you need to, and mark orders as shipped. You can also search through your orders and view all your shipped orders as well. Okay, over on your profile tab, you can update your photo, bio, and genre tags, but the coolest bit is that you can edit all of your merch from here. You just tap on the merchandise tab and there's a list of all the merch you're selling on Bandcamp. If a merch item is missing images, that's called out here, and you can just tap that and then add a photo right from your phone. You can also edit the quantity, price, shipping, and so on. And finally, the app has all sorts of useful push notifications for things like new merch orders, low inventory, or just sales. Okay, the Bandcamp app for artists and labels is available now for Android as well as iOS. It's free, and we hope you'll check it out.
Okay, so that was um, a video by my boss. Uh, and that's about the Bandcamp app um, for artists and fans. So I've been using this for my own label. Um, we've had this since September last year. And uh, it's kind of interesting how what works and what doesn't. Um, so I did a, we, we had a show, like a birthday for our label last year in London. So I messaged everyone within London saying, here's a discount code, 20% off tickets, blah, blah, blah. Zero take up, no one clicked. No one bought the cheap ticket. I don't know why. Maybe I sold it at the wrong time. Maybe people who buy records don't like to leave the house. I don't know what the logic is. Um, equally, we did something where we put up um, a 20% sale and put a code, download, a discount code, sorry. Um, and we sold about £2,000 worth of records in a day. It was crazy. People were really kind of into it. So um, it's definitely something to experiment with. Um, one of the things it didn't show you in, in the video is that you can add a photo, you can actually add video as well. So you could take a video on your phone after a show, you know, thanks for coming down, it was amazing, look at the, the people in the crowd, blah, 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 and post that as well, which I think, you know, for the right kind of artist, if you've got, uh, if you're good at um, talking to people and, and enjoy that side of things, it's a good way of sending those messages across. Um, and that app is totally free to use uh, and it's free to download from, from the App Store um, and definitely worth checking out if you have a Bandcamp account. It's one of those things, the more fans you have on the site, the more um, effective that becomes as a, as a way of um, promoting what you're doing. But it's, it's certainly helping quite a few people out at the moment uh, with things like restocks of out of sales stock and that kind of thing. Um, that's it, that's my kind of whistle stop um, seven uh, tips to make money on Bandcamp. Um, I missed the sort of secret tip, which is to have really great music, but you guys are way ahead of that already, I'm sure. Um, so we've got about uh, I think 10, 10, 15 minutes or so, if anyone's got any questions. Uh, yeah, oh, there's a microphone, great. <coughs> Does Bandcamp pay any royalties to the artists? If yes, what kind of royalties? And if not, why not? Yes, so um, uh, the way it works is that we take, uh, so you set up an account as an artist, um, you decide how much it's gonna, you're gonna sell your items for, and then we will take 15% of digital sales, 10% of physical sales, and the rest of that money aside from PayPal processing fees, is yours to keep. So yeah, you, you get, you know, between 80 and 85% of the um, money made uh, for every sale. Okay, so these are, this is actually a commission from, from the sale. It, it's exactly. Not, it's not a royalty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Generated by, by the listens on the on the platform no so yeah we don't we don't monetize streaming um uh that that's we're not a streaming site we're a, a sales site um we actually there's a setting in in your profile settings it's automatically set that no one gets more than three plays from any ip address before they get locked out and have to buy uh, and you can actually manually change that to whatever you want um you know the way we see it i, I think the way i look at the streams um and how it works is it's the equivalent of having something on a listening post in a record store. You're checking it out. If you like it, you buy it. Um, and and I, I don't, because of those limits, I don't think people are using us instead of Spotify or Apple Music. It's a, it's a completely alternative way of doing it. Right. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Anyone else? Oh, just here. Yeah. Um, just carry on from that. So clarify if... If I buy a track, as well as downloading it, from that point onwards, I can also stream it an unlimited number of times through the app. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 And then the stats that you were showing where it said track plays and then money. Mm. Um, so all the track plays only if it's streamed. So even if I download it and then I was to play it through another app, yeah. you wouldn't know how many times I played it. No, no, no. So yeah, and, and the way we break down the stats is that um, it will show you plays from visitors to your page and from people who bought it. Cool. So you can see... The, the, the difference who's previewing and who's exactly yeah eyes. and and I'd say kind of um, from experience of using it um, the visitors play counts when you get a, a, a track featured in one of our editorial things 
the, the plays spike up from visitors and then obviously you should then see a bit of a kind of follow on into sales. Um, and we actually did, I think about two years ago, we did an analysis of the top 25 labels on Bandcamp and we looked at the number of streams versus the income they were getting uh, in sales and it worked out about 35 cents per stream because the idea is that that listen converts into a sale and, that, and that's working pretty well. Can I ask one more question? Um, <laughs> Fans can also navigate through the app. I'm right in saying that. So the app you just mm -hmm. showed us was more for the artists, but, yeah. but fans can also use the app. Do you have any uh, um, any stats on of the people using Bandcamp? What percentage are using it through the app, and what percentage are going to the, to the website? Um, I don't actually, but yeah, I I I will seek that out. Um, I think I mean uh, we're finding. I think that. Um, so some of the editorial stuff I showed. So uh, we have an album of the day, which is an album of the day, and you know we put one of those up, I think, every weekday, but maybe not on the weekends. Um, and that and the new and notable stuff shows up in the app as well. And I know that's a very big bonus, because some of the bigger articles, you know, they're not going to fit in the format of the app. Um, I don't have the stats on that, but I'll try and look that up, because it's an interesting, you know, yeah, it's an interesting thing to know, for sure. Anyone else? One just over here. Um, are there plans to uh, distribute Bandcamp daily across other platforms? Because uh, as a user, um, yeah, one has to go to Bandcamp to listen to Bandcamp daily. And uh, when that's not your regular source of, you know, like podcasts and whatever, sure. it's not very user intuitive, I find. Is, are there plans to service it through other uh, medium? Um, so do you mean specifically the radio show or the editorial content in general. Sorry, the, yeah, the radio show. The radio show. Um, no, I think we, it is something that's been discussed before, but I think part of, part of why we wouldn't is, is almost what you're saying, is that we want people to be on the site, and we want them... Uh, I think anything where you wouldn't be able to just one-click and buy and, and give that money back to the artist, we, we'd want to shy away from. Um, so, yeah, possibly not. I mean, we have done things like... Um, we, we for a while last year, we did like a Bandcamp monthly show on Worldwide FM, an, an online station, um, and it was kind of collating a bunch of stuff from the four weekly shows of that month and, and putting them in there. Um, and, and we might do stuff like that again, but I think in the main, we want to kind of be bringing people back to that front page and, and trying to kind of get them into our, our Bandcamp universe as much as possible. Okay, thanks. No problem. Thanks. Okay, any more? Cool, I'm going to be under time. Well done me, or you even. Um, great, well look, thank you very much for um, spending some of your early Saturday afternoon listening to me. Um, I'm going to be around if you want to come and say hello or ask any other more in-depth questions, feel free to, and, uh, and go to bandcamp.com and buy some great music. Uh, have, a, have a good rest of the weekend. Thanks. <laughs>